Hi everyone, my name is Rachel Klein and I work for the USDA and RCS as a natural resource specialist. And today I'm gonna to be speaking on behalf of the Eastern Ohio Grazing Council on drought water management, uh, making the most out of short livestock water supplies through herd division. This is the example farm that we're gonna use for today, uh, roughly 100 acre farm located in Eastern Ohio. Um, the property boundaries there are outlined in red as you can see. Um, this farm consists of uh, 20 cow-calf pairs and 15 stalkers, uh, 60 head of sheep, as well as uh, 30 breeding sows slash market hall. The sheep and the cows are rotated on the pasture, whereas the hogs are housed within two buildings here on the farm and do not utilize the pasture. As we move on here, I've laid out um, in yellow lines what some of the pasture divisions would look like, um, which in this operation would be farther divided into daily paddocks um, with temporary fencing. Um, for the sake of what I'm trying to show though, uh, you can just see the main pasture paddocks. We're gonna zoom in here to the north side of the farm where I've highlighted where all of your watering points are um, I just want to point out that all of these watering points are being sourced from this one well here at the barn. Um, so we have several hydrants and even some stock tank troughs um, located throughout the north part of the farm, which are all tied back to this well here. We're moving down now to the southwest portion of the farm where you can see our watering points here as well. Um, and they're going to be sourced off of this spring development. Um, the water is then going to be pumped up on top of the hill to this stock tank trough and then gravity fed down to this stock tank trough. Um, meanwhile, the hydrants and the additional watering sources being fed off of um, some pipeline that is attached to the spring as well. We're now gonna to move to the right southeast portion of the farm where once again, our um, source of water is going to be a spring. We're gonna pump up on top of the hill to a trough, which is then gonna gravity feed down to some additional troughs um, as well as attached to that spring is going to be pipeline, both above and underground uh, to feed hydrants and some additional watering sources for our individual daily paddocks. Uh, I just wanna point out though, um, that in addition to our livestock, our pastures being watered by the spring, um, the spring is also feeding our hog barns, which is uh, very important to consider um, when looking at our rotation. In addition to all of our livestock water sources, we do have a well um, that is main purpose is to feed solely the house. However, in certain situations can be set up um, to attach to the hog barns and a few of the closer paddocks as well. Zoomed out here, we can see the entire farm and all of its water points, um, all color coded by what water source they are attached to. Um, as you can see here in purple, we have on the north side, all of our water source points being sourced back to this well. On the southwest side, our water points being sourced back to the spring. And on the southeast side, all of our water points being sourced back to this spring. In addition, as I said before, um, we do have this well here that's main purpose is to feed the house. During a normal year, our livestock would currently be in rotation together. Um, we'd have our cow calves, our stalkers, and our sheep all together in the same paddocks, uh, rotating through pastures. Um, important to understand that that then puts 100% of our livestock watering needs all on one individual source, wherever it may be. Because of the drought this year, any one source throughout the farm was not enough to keep up with 100% of our livestock needs. So what we've done is divided our livestock up into specific groups. So we now have um, the sheep 
all on the north side. Specifically, we have them on a sacrifice lot to save our pastures. Uh, we're feeding hay and their main water source is the well. Um, we have our, brought our cow-calf pairs down into another sacrifice lot on the southwest side um, and their main water source being a spring. And we have moved our stalker group uh, behind the barn here, um, being fed off of the same water source being the spring as our hog barns are. So we've now split up instead of having 100% of our livestock needs all being based off of one field, um, one water source, we have now split them up into three groups across the farm, all from three separate water sources. Just to do a little bit of quick math here for our livestock needs across the entire farm. Um, roughly speaking, if a cow would drink 20 gallons a day and we have 35 total head of cattle, that's 700 gallons a day. A uh, sheep, a gallon and a half times 60 head of sheep, that's 90 gallons a day. And the hogs, five gallons times 30 head is 150, all totaling livestock needs 940 gallons a day across the entire farm. Now, what we've done is by splitting our groups up across different water sources, we've now put our stalkers on our hogs at 450 gallons on one source, our cow-calf pairs at 400 gallon need on one source, and the sheep at 90 gallon need on another source. That's now broke it down to where there's 48% need solely off of this spring source. That's 43% need off of this spring source. And that's 10% need now off of this well source. This worked out really well for us um, in the early stages of the drought as we did see our, our water um, supplies start to drop, um, that when we split up this way, it wasn't up to keep up with our animals. However, the longer this went on and not getting any more rain, we're starting to get close to our supplies still not meeting our demands, even though we have broke up our groups across different sources. So then the question becomes, what do we do next? And that's where our water rotation comes in. In conclusion of this presentation, uh, I just wanted to remind everybody that um, this is for emergency drought situations. I understand that in normal circumstances, um, having your livestock spread out across your farm is not ideal, um, but this is just trying to um, create a way that we can meet our livestock water needs um, without having to haul in outside water um, to our farm. The first step of this would be taking inventory of what, what resources do you have, what water sources do you have present on your farm, and um, also how much does each one of those produce. I didn't mention earlier, but we have our sheep on the north side of the farm. Um, those sheep drink very little water a day, so even though there are many head, um, they're actually only taking 10% of our water need from our livestock across our farm. But what's really important to understand is that the well they are on is one of the slowest producing water sources across the farm. So we don't want our cows up there because our cows are gonna drink the most amount of water. So, you know, we're putting our sheep that are um, gonna use less water on our slowest water source. And then next it's just deciding um, what groups of animals do you have to split up according to their needs and just making the most out of multiple sources across the entire acreage.